Hello, today I'm fishing at Twin Lakes in Bedfordshire and I'm going to show you my approach to fishing dead red maggots that are taking venues apart up and down the country. Look at these little critters. Hopefully you'll learn from the tips I show you. I'm going to feed two lines, one across tight over and one in the margin. But I'm going to be a little bit different where I'm going to feed the margin with dead maggots and ground bait and my far line across with dead maggot and micros. And that gives me the option then, if it's not so good over and I come in the margin and that's working, I can change that to ground bait and dead maggot as well. And the same in the margin, if that's not working as well, I'll change that to micros and maggot, vice versa, whichever one works the best. So let's get some feeding. I'll kick it off with probably half a pot of dead reds and then top it up making it a pot with the micros. Let's put that across. And when I cut this in, I'm going to swish it about a little bit so it spreads it. So I don't want it all on top of each other. And as I said, my margin, that'd be a good half a pot of dead reds, and then I'll top that with ground bait. And that gives me both options then, that if one works better than the other, I can change it vice versa across all the, the margin. Well, that's the two lines fed. As you've seen, I've put in pro probably three quarters of a 250ml cup on both lines. Volume-wise of bait, what you'd probably get through, a five-hour match, generally, and especially here, you'd probably only want maybe three pint of dead reds, but you could feed more. But the thing is, the more you feed sometimes, the more you'll get a fish in your peg, and then it's a nightmare trying to hook the bite. So try and keep it as less as possible, and then you get more out of your swim. A lot of angs tend to feed too much, and even though the, the fish are going berserk on the dead reds, you're just causing such a commotion and fish coming in that your rig's all over the place and it's very hard to hook them, and you end up failing to hook a lot of fish. So try and keep it as less bait as possible, but more's better, if you understand what I mean. You can put in two less, and the fish just clear it up and they're not there, whereas you're putting in enough to hold them there and keep them occupied, but not keep too much there, where it's over-occupied and it just swirls and tails and it becomes a nightmare. And if that is happening, yeah. cut your feed back, you are putting in too much. Well, I'm going to go across now. I always start across rather in the margin. I like to let the margins build up, which is a norm in most matches. But um, I've put the initial feed in. I've already seen fish on the inside and fish over. Um, the lake's a little bit low in water at the moment. I'll say we're at Twin Lakes, it's Jack's Lake. So I'm probably fishing over in about 14 inches of water. But I've got a little flexi toss pot fixed on here. And each time I go out, I'll be tapping in the little pot. I've got the medium sized pot on with half dead reds and capped off with some micros. And where they dampened, these fishery micros, I can just push them down my thumb and they won't fall out, as you can see, until I tap them out. And I can already see fish over there. So go over there and um, tap a bit of bait and see how we go. So I'm probably about five, six inches off the far side. You know, there's fish all over the place over there, but I just know from past experience that you start off, you, it's manic at first and then it settles down. So it's just a matter of just getting to a little simple rhythm with the feeding and getting the fish educated to when I'm feeding to them. But it'll just be a gentle lift up when the float goes under, no mad striking. I've got two reds on, two dead reds. 
Just looking for a nice, positive bite. Most important thing also is what a lot of anglers forget is while I'm fishing over there, once I start catching, is keeping the clock in, ticking away inside my head that every sort of half hour, 40 minutes to put a bit more feed on the margin because they can easily clear all that first initial feed up and just go. So very important to keep that topped up sort of every 30, 40 minutes. Not a lot, just enough to keep them there. And the other thing, where I've had indications here and now there's nothing happening there, I try and keep a clock in my mind that every probably three or four minutes to come back in and go back over there with a the toss spot with a few more dead reds and some micros in, just to keep that being topped up as well. Because the carp can come in, mop the bait up and just go. It's very important to keep a steady flow of bait, but the right amount of bait. And that's what only you can determine when you're fishing to what you're catching. It's very easy to put too much in. You can't take out what you've put in. So again, just a pinch of dead reds, half filling the, the medium flexi put up, and then the micros and just push them down. So they don't bounce out while I'm going out because I've got an open pot. And when I get to the position, I can just tap them out. So the main thing, you get the pot in position, tap them pellets out, then get your hook beak straight over them, loan it in. Also, where I've plumbed up out there, I've plumbed out at dead depth. So I'm not over depth, I'm just touching bottom. So the minute one of those fish, fish one of the carp, just sucks me bait in, the float will just disappear. Never want to fish over depth. I can see fish in my peg now, I've fed again. I can see fish in my peg now, right round my float. But the exciting thing is, you don't know when the float's going to go under. And sometimes that craft they can come in and take every piece of bait up, not touch yours on the hook, but... That's just, we just started, so it just, it's very, they're very cagey at first, and all of a sudden it'll just switch on and you get a nice little rhythm. I think the fish just feed more positively on dead maggots as opposed to live maggots. But now, I never fish a single dead red, it's always two, three or four, so they don't wiggle, they'll never mask the hook. They feel it's safe as well. I see another one down there, see its tail up in the air. You can see the fish there swirling around, so there's plenty of fish there, it's just getting to Get the heads down, and there we are, I've got one now. But that's the second time that I've fed. Oh, it's a chub. See the dead red on the outside of its mouth, they love them. Lovely chub. So just repeat the process again. This time I'm going to put three dead reds on the hook. So let's put three on. And again, just half fill the pot with dead reds and then cap it off the dampened fishery micros, just push them down and they'll stay in there when I'm shipping out. The worst thing is shipping out and all your bait bouncing out. And I know one gentle tap when I get over there, they'll just fall out where I'm fishing. Like that. Nice and simple. And then I've got three maggots on there this time, so it should stick out like a sore thumb as opposed to the loose feed I've put in. And hopefully they'll pick that out quicker. There we go. Trying to get towards that aerator. Let's try and keep the pressure on him. I think he's away, I can ship back quick. Just take your time with them. When you rush fish, you can pull out of them. I need to rush them. Nice mirror, I think. Yeah. There we go, lovely mirror. Now just pick them three dead reds out a bit quicker. 
Beautiful fish. Lovely mirror. And I said earlier, there's a little clock in my mind. After the next fish, or the next time I go out there, I'll put some more feed down on that inside margin. Just keeping that peg ticking over till I go down there. And with feeding fish down there, the longer you leave it, obviously the better it will be. The worst thing to do is think, oh, there's fish down there, let's go down the margin now. Well, if you're catching over, just carry on. And that margin line can only get better. So, repeating the operation, and the next time I come in, I'll be feeding that margin again. There's plenty of fish there feeding. As soon as you put the bait in, they're straight on it. There we go, straight away again. I'm peg 30 on Jack's Lake and I've got an air rate to my left and lily pads to my right, so I've got to be very careful when playing them. What I love about fishing here is you don't know whether it's going to be a carp, a barbel, a chub, maybe a skimmer, even a tench. Some lovely tench in here. Yeah, it's definitely a mirror, this one. A lovely fish, lovely condition. Yeah, another nice mirror. Just do fight harder in the summer, all the fish, but there we go. Can't beat the old bump bar, just ease that landing net over that bar, easy to get in. Another lovely mirror. What is nice is we're a lot of anglers here today, pleasure anglers, and they're all catching fish. It's great to see. Make them come back again and again. Never leave the float dead still for too long, maybe 30 seconds, 40 the most, just give it a gentle lift and reposition it, because there's a fish looking near you where your bait is and it moves, they tend to go for it quicker, thinking if I don't get it, my mate will. I think that's what happens, and you just get a quicker bite, you, you create a bite quicker, rather than just sitting there dead still. They are straight away again. Right, the two rigs I've set up, are very similar in that they're both 016, 014 hook lengths, but I've got my cross rig is a four inch, just normal 16 hook, as opposed to my margin rig, I've set up with a four inch banded rig, so I could band double red maggot, and if I want to, I could fish the margin rig across, see if it's better, if I catch more fish rather than hooking them on a normal hook. And because I'm feeding ground bait in the margin, I've got a bigger pot, one of the biggest or the large flexi toss spot, as opposed to my cross line, I've got the medium flexi toss pot where I'm feeding maggots and micros. And both have 10 to 12, the Holocore matrix elastic, which I love using. But a simple setup. Gives me two choices, I can fish the margin rig across, or I can fish the across rig in the margin. Very simple and very effective. The margin float is like a little dibber. It's point two, where I've just got a little tiny bulk of tens, ten stots, and then my across rig is exactly the same with the bulk, but because it's a point four rugby ball shaped float, and I've got a bulk of nine stots there. So there's no shot on the hook length. I mean, you could use it, you could use a three inch hook length, but I'm getting away with four inch hook length, it's working. So there's two rigs there, and those two rigs cover everything.
Well, I couldn't resist just dropping that in while the cameraman was setting up his cameras and I've got one straight away and I think it's a barbel. I just couldn't resist dropping it in that margin. Shot off like a barbel, but I may be wrong, but just felt like a barbel. And it's the same depth as a cross, but I didn't even see that there was fish down there and just I thought oh, I'll have a quick drop in and it went straight away, so I caught the cameraman out. But I'm sure it's a barbel. Yeah, just see its tail. They're oh, lovely fish they are. Look at him. Beautiful fish. Lovely barbel. Two and a half pound. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Awesome. These are the type of fish that you will catch on dead maggot. And you probably wouldn't think those in your peg fishing, corn, pellets, other baits. They love dead red maggot and that just proves the point. Well, I'll just go down the margin again. I've started on a normal hook because I think it's best to start on a normal hook and then you can see how much better banded maggot is, if there is any difference. Now you will get perch, there are some perch in here and perch will take maggot. So we won't count that one. But it gives me the chance then to go on to a banded maggot, which they just virtually hook themselves on a banded maggot. There's no striking, or they just pull the elastic out. Get that bait out straight away, same spot, then lay your rig over it. Plenty of bites and indications down there. There we go, another fish. In fact, much quicker than over because I've been feeding it for a while now. A real nice fish that is. You didn't know he was hooked, this one. Now he's trying to fight and get around that aerator again, but he's trying to see if I can get him up, get a bit of air. Yeah, let's keep him up there. Oh, he's fighting hard, this one. On the far bank now. Trying to get control of him, he's coming now. There's a nice fish for here. He's confused him now. Lovely fish. That's a very good fish for here, that is. That beautiful mirror. Awesome fish. Right, okay, now I'm going to change to a banded maggot, just to see if it's even better. I mean, it's been good with the hook maggots down there, but just change to a band just to show you how effective this can be. So I'm a little band them. Stretch the band over, I'll just put in two dead reds. A little bit fiddly once you get them in. There we are, two lovely banded dead reds. Let's see how effective that is. Same procedure, I've just changed the pot over so I've got the bigger pot on here. Little pinch of dead reds. Top it up with ground bait. So you're not putting in as many dead reds now down there. Now I can see some swells down there, the fish are still there. So get the bait in as quick as possible. They should just hook themselves on this if they take it. And bite straight away. Seems to be a lot of little small fish down there. And the beauty with the hair rig maggots is they just let go. You don't hook them.
There we are, straight away. You didn't have to strike, they just ripped the elastic out. Okay, so I thought, thought it was a barbel at first, but it's definitely another carp. But it's amazing though, you, you think, oh, they're not down there because they had a couple of perch, but just fish through them and you'll get the carp. I, I'd seen the odd swirl down there, just very confident they were down there. You know, you're going to get small fish uh, coming. Normally they just fall off, but just persevere and then better fish are there, as I've shown you. They just love that dead maggot. And at the moment, it's such an awesome bait where it's been so warm. Yeah, another nice fish. Two different lines now, and two different ways of hooking the maggot. And plenty of fish, absolutely lovely. Look at him, perfect mirror. Out the margin, this time on banded red maggot, dead reds. A deadly method, I've shown you two ways of fishing it, a crossing in the margin. Get on it for this time of the year, it's an awesome bait, and it'll get you great catches, just like I've shown you.